Good evening, Sam Tolk from Sound of Joy Music Services, and we're doing a live, um, you want to call it a shed or music lesson. Um, I do have, um, welcome to those who've come in so far, the two have joined. I did, I'm answering a comment uh, on one of the videos that was watched. Someone was said it would be nice if you slow it down and show us what you're doing, and I just wanted to be able to answer that uh, gentleman, it was a male, uh, just to let him know that usually if I'm playing a song, it's not really designed to teach. It's designed for you to listen. But I have no problem in doing a live session to give it, give it a, the idea of the concept as to why I use the chords I use in a song. So I want to be able to cover that and to cover any questions um, that, you, that you may have on, on the interpretation of music as we use it in gospel. So please feel free to comment. This is more of a teaching session than it is just uh, watching me play. I'm just looking at my camera settings to see if it shows enough. It's, like it's not showing enough. I'm going to make some adjustments. Okay, I think that might give me a better overview of what's gone. Good, that's what I want to be able to see. Looking at the questions asked. I'm here, me, it just looks like, like, I don't you understand your statement, Timothy. For Chris, hey, brother, what are the chords and scales you are using, thinking about over the music? Good question. My background is that of a instrumentalist from a high school classical jazz band. So big band sound chords is primarily what I use. Adjust this a little bit more, get a better view of my keyboard. So when I'm playing, depending upon what the song is, I'm thinking big, fat sounding chords. So you'll see I will have, on, a, on a, most case, a bass at the bottom, doubled bass by the, by the actual fifth note of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. So C, D, E, F, G. I will double that together to fill a, a, a nice fat bass out on the bottom. On my top end, I'll be filling the middle chords. So I'll have a, a C, E, excuse me, D, hmm, G, C, look at the notes, D, E, and another G. Now that'll be my whole um, basis of the chord. Oh, shout music? I haven't done shout music in about uh, 20, ooh, 22 years. Not that I can't do it, but I haven't, ha haven't had to do it. But just, and even still, in that, in that sense, I use the same concept if I'm doing shouting music. I actually build the song with, with the actual music. So you'll hear my, my bottom and my chords here. This is, again, the bottom. This is the middle. And if I want to extend, I'll, especially on the piano sound, I'll release here and then give the whole gambit. So I'll, I'll work within this range of playing most of the time. As you watch my videos, hey, welcome. I think of Chris and uh, Mr. Gomez and Johnny. You see, I, I work from this range 100% of the time. I may go below here sometimes. I may go up here if I want to do something, you know, beyond that range, if I want to do something out of the ordinary. But most points, I'm working with all the notes that is, that's, that's encompassed within this range. So my ear has to be able to hear all the notes that are in there. So every chord will be based upon the notes found in this range. So, um, Chris, you brought up you brought up shouting music. I made shouting music like a how do I put it like like a song. It had a beginning, it had a middle, it had an end, depending upon how long it went. But it was always filled with movement, just like you would hear big 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 band sounds where there's so much movement in the song. My shouting music was the same way. 
Chris, the dominant chords that I've found that is found in gospel are seventh, seventh chords, minor six chords, diminished chords. Um, what's that other chord that's here? I have to, I have to look up what, what this chord is. And there's my, what, minor seventh again? Oh, there's my seventh. But depending upon what key I'm in, what the actual finishing chord is. Um, the, the church chords are all built on em emotions. How can you get that person who's listening to you to get emotional when you do this? Now, that might not get them emotional. But if you change up on it, now you've got an emotional. Now you've really got an emotional. You got them sitting on the edge of their seats. Now they're looking at you funny. Now they're ready to shout as uh, you were asking. And those, those are big band chords. Six. Uh, plus five. A minor six. Diminished. A G7, right? Just finishing it off. That, you know, that gospel, that gospel change. Now I'm thinking organ now. Can you spell a few of those chords out you use in C? Uh, yeah, I could. Um, C7. Again, I always have a nice solid bottom. C. A G and a C in the bottom again. That's because I love to hear that fat sound in the bottom. Right hand, because I have ten fingers. Welcome, join. Welcome, join. Welcome, join. Joan, forgive me. For the right hand, because it's in the C, it's a C seventh. I use C E G B because it's a C seventh, and I put an octave C just to fill it up. Now, if your hand don't have that reach. You can always let this one go, but you got to have that top. Then I'll resolve. Now, without getting my book out, I want to I want to call this correctly to you. In the book name, this is a C plus five. Now, again, I, I, I look at the chords in a book. I have a chord book that spells these out to me. If I leave out that that seventh chord, again, it sounds pretty there. It's C, one, two, three, four, five is the fifth note, plus half a step up. Now, you hear this time, this chord a lot in, in the big band sound. It's a touch thing. You, it's almost as though you have to... Uh, okay, thanks, Chris. It's almost as though you want to color your chords. I left that out. For that gospel sound and this big band sound also, the minor six. Now we're still in C, but with an F chord. C minor, right? C, E flat, G, A, C. C minor six. But it's that's the jazz sound. Which also for those that play for preachers, the, the actual Pentecostal preachers. Those are your preacher chords also. Same chords, just used in for, for, for different um, different patterns. Hi, right, this is Brenda, old school player. Love the old school players. That's that's where I'm from. That's why I love that that big band sound when I'm playing. So we got to, to the minor six chord with right minor six, but now with an F bass. Sounds kind of horrible here, but when you're building a chord, when you're building you know, um, excitement in a chord, right? You're still building excitement. Now we're gonna go up to the diminished. Now you see, I'm still doubling up on the bass and putting that middle there because I like to hear a fat bottom to a song or to a chord rather. C, E flat, G flat, A. That's your standard C diminished, but I love octave playing because it sounds fatter. So we got the, 
right? Right? To our diminished. Now, here's where we're going to. Thanks, Chris, for, for giving me the uh, the coordinate. I don't have my, I don't have my book out because a lot of what I do when I'm playing, I've heard it and I've practiced it for years. Only if I need to look it up can I go and name it, but I know where I am chord wise. And now we're going to resolve out of this last chord. Now we got a G seventh chord, right? Minus the B on my right hand. I have an F nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm using the knife note, but I'm inverting it to finish the chord, which what makes gospel music so hard to um, to communicate to a, to a trained musician because they'll say, "Well, that that chord doesn't make no sense." It does in gospel music and in jazz. So and all we I don't I'm just doing basically jazz chords. Sixes, sevenths, minor sixes, diminished, sevenths. It's a matter of how you want to approach it. And as I say, I try to make everything an actual song. Um oh yeah, I've I've got I think I got Cody on one of my systems, but I, I haven't introduced it yet to everything I'm doing. I like this live feel where not only do you see um, uh, a lot of people I, I find don't look at chord names. They just want to see how you find it on the keyboard. So I have a nice view here where you actually see my hands and I try to sit down to where you see the chords and see how I'm actually placing my fingers. And then you're going to resolve out of that back into your C9, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's a nice note if you if you continue from the bottom. Uh, Emmanuel, yes, I do. I'm actually retiring um, in a month, uh, giving up 47 years of working. Um, you know, getting old to be doing all this young man's work. So I'm going to be giving more lessons during the daytime hours as I revamp uh, my uh, future. A lot of this that I've learned is from also being a full-time uh, a full-time worker. I, I did music after work, so I learned this in a very a long period of time. So it's e easy for me to talk about it because I, I took so many years trying to figure it out first for myself. So yes, I, I currently offer lessons on Skype. I was doing it in the evenings, but after August, when I fully, fully retire and I begin to revamp what I'm going to be doing musically, I will be having live lessons like this and sessions like this using Zoom, where it won't just be one person, but there'll be multiple people taking a Zoom lesson, all learning the same thing at the same time. So I can listen to everybody practice and watch what they're doing and impart information so keep, keep an eye on this site i will be posting when i'm when i'm set up to do that i got a green screen set up and working on the software also for that so back to what i was uh chris's uh, question the big band sound is what i use oh yeah this is what the re retirement is going to look like i believe that's my um brother-in-law james patterson So uh, the, the big band sound is what overrides a lot of what I do. And I'll borrow chords from Beethoven also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If minor. Again, a seventh chord. Diminished chords, seven. There it is. 
Once you get the real concept of what music is, um, Barry Harris, I've, I've watched a few of his videos. Because I was a 100% church musician, a lot of music I listened to but didn't take time to study. So when I look at the old YouTube videos of the, the great musicians, I don't consider myself great. I, I, I consider myself as functional. Plug me in where you need me to be in the church, and I can carry a service from 10 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night because I could do anthems, hymns, and spirituals in the morning. I could do gospel in the afternoon, and I can do your praise and worship songs at night. So I was an all-purpose musician. You didn't need three musicians. You needed just me. And that's what they call takes you to the world of um, burnout. That's why I retired because I did everybody's. I played for everybody. But yeah, Barry Harris, I've seen some of the, he, the videos that they do have of him. when He's doing his workshop. I believe my brother attended one of his um, workshops in, at Lincoln Center. Tremendous musician. Um, because church musicians are not taught where we are made. And let me express what that is. There's no, no one sends us to school to play for a church. If we are allowed to touch a piano and have a, a natural gift, someone will say, oh, you're, you're an organist here. Start learning songs. And they won't put a book in our hand. They won't give us a teacher. Uh, they would even give us an actual mentor. They'll just say, keep, keep at it. And after a while, God is going to bless you. I was one of those that did not get that encouragement, did not get that musician who took me on this, under his wings and says, here, this is the scale. I did not have that. I didn't learn that until I went to a high, high school and the music teacher had me playing the French on and he showed me this. And he said, that's it. And he also, he also showed me two other chords and he told me, you're not here to learn piano, you're here to learn how to play the French on. Uh, Sherry asked me about the Zoom lessons. I will have it set up where we, whatever the Zoom lessons are, they will be geared towards the uh, the skill set. So it may be um, one morning I will have, let's say, between five to maybe ten beginner musicians because I have I have uh, of quite a few music books here that are for beginners that take you through the theory of music, what a chord is, how it sounds how to properly place your fingers when you're playing. Um, what else did it has? Rhythm. What the rhythm is. How to count quarter notes, half notes. Those, that, those, that Zoom lesson will be for the, for the avid beginner who can't afford to go to a music teacher, but if I can get 10 in the class and maybe $5 each, that's fine for me to be able to give, you the, to give that person and those in that group the actual basics of music, which is not what I got when I got started. This is what I had. That was my start on playing the piano, which is why I had such a desire to be able to play whatever I heard. Because if I heard it one way, I played exactly the way I hear it. So when I learned albums, I could play the song if though I was on the album. Without a teacher, I learned that from the album. Because to me, the person who playing the song on the album was my teacher. I don't want to miss so many of the questions. Let's see what we have here. Zoom classes are going to be for free. No, I'm sorry, they won't be free. As I say, I'm going into the into the into the retirement mode, so I'll need to be able to justify paying for the internet, as they say, and the fees that go with you know broadband cost. But it'll be to the point where I won't be there to take advantage of people. That's why I would like to have multiple people in the class. Uh, along with that, I will also be doing my own music productions. There'll be um, courses on how to use Pro Tools from a gospel standpoint, because I also create music on, on Pro Tools. I'll be bringing in a, a singer to also work with me once this COVID thing makes, it, makes that possible. Or if I have to do a virtual singer, then I, I can do that too. Oh, thank you, brother. Uh, my, my brother, brother-in-law, brother James Patterson. I'm, I'm, I'm just one of a number. Do you really need to attend music school to be a great pianist? Here's my, 
and I'm just answering uh, Emmanuel, make sure I didn't miss anyone. Um, here's my take on this. I would feel that I could have played Broadway had I had gone to a music school to learn the, the correct way to play. That's what I feel. Because I can listen to any piece of music from any genre and on the piano duplicate it exactly the way I hear it. Now that's with not, if you put sheet music, in, if you put hymn book music in front of me, I can read that because I was a trained French horn player. So I know how to recognize notes on sheet music. If you put piano music in front of me, I'm going to struggle because it's too many notes in too many different places and too many riffs and runs that I can understand with not having been trained by a professional or a skilled teacher. But if I listen to the music with the sheet music in front of me, I will see this. I will see this. I can look at the sheet music and hear that and then duplicate it so that if called upon uh, to do or someone says, well, I need a can you write me a let's say off broad. My always one of my dreams was always to play for an, an off Broadway production and be the either the writer of some of the music or uh, play along with, with, with the actual band or music that they already have. I always felt that I had the ear to hear what's happening musically. If I'm, if I'm in B flat and we're trying to do a, 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 a particular scene that's happy. I can do a happy scene. A sad scene. Happy again. I can do that. I can hear scenes because I've listened to so much music over the years from every cartoon I used to listen to, to commercials, to, you know, jingles for uh, what I, I always love listening to the, to, to the sounds of the music scores for these big picture, big, big budget pictures. Because I want to hear what the strings are doing, what the horns are doing, what the, because you will not hear no piano in a lot of these things. Sometimes you do. But because I can hear all of that, I always thought, gee, what if? If I had a chance to write for Steven Spielberg. I can hear these chords in my head because I practiced them from learning so many songs. And that's, again, the practice um, discipline that I had. In school, they taught us to practice your parts. As an instrumentalist, I would practice this. That would be me practicing on a French horn. So I brought that practice regimen as a French horn player to playing the piano. Let me see. I'm going to lose all the questions here. Oh, Sherry. Oh. Well, I, I definitely will post once I'm set up and ready to, to have that, Sherry. Uh, I'm studying film scoring. Wonderful, Chris. Um, film scoring, please. You know, there are so many YouTubers now putting out their own personal productions. I was feeling bad because a lot of them that I was watching wasn't having scoring of music. And I said, gee, what if I, what if I was going to score music for them? Then I, as I'm continually watching their content, they're now doing scoring. I'm like, ah, oh, man, missed out on it. But that's okay because I'm listening to what the kind of music they're scoring. And Bob, what are the basic principles to voicing chords in the left hand? I play, but I just play chords in right hand and just the note or octave in the left hand. Let me talk to you about my struggle about getting the left hand to sound like something with no one to instruct me. Excuse me, I just want to move monitor. I can see better. With no one to instruct me what how to play behind the left hand, I struggled with getting the left hand comfortable. Again, when you're a gospel player, all you know is doing bass runs. That's all you know to do. If you do octaves. But I never had a, a left hand that uh, 
could complement what the right hand was doing. So with no instructor, with no one to show me, I said, well, let me see how I could train my left hand to respond to my right hand. The first thing what I did was this. That's not correct. That's the pinkies. This is the wrong number. This would be the first one. Here we go. Still wrong. I used to work at this. Make sure that both hands were playing the correct notes. Okay, because I'm comfortable and I'm probably talking. I'm not really doing how I, I should do it. But I had to be able to land on the same notes with both hands. Random, of course. But the whole idea was I need the, both hands to be in syncopation. If I can get that on single notes... Try to remember the things I used to do. Wow, so long I haven't done this. Once I got that down, if I could do a chord here, I should be able to do a chord here. If I can do this. Not just one key, but get a little high. Now chain. Yes. So I had to get my hands comfortable with playing with whatever my right hand does, the left hand doing the same thing, using the fingering that the left hand has. That took years. I'll just be honest with you. It took years. It wasn't, you know, I had it in a year. I'm talking maybe four or five years of doing that because then it came down to what didn't I learn from a teacher? So I would hear people playing that. And I go, how do they get this? Once I began to understand how the left hand can move, that it has motion, that it can do chords, that it can do this, then I learned all the chords in conjunction to where the right hand is going to be. Six chord pentatonic scale. Once I got comfortable doing that, it was a matter of now of applying that to playing in to playing music. And because I played hymns a lot of the times, those chords fell in place. If I was doing, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a real good hymn. Oh, Jesus loves me. and finish it off because I hear the chord changes in my head I knew where the notes were you know nah. Here it is. once I knew where the notes were the left hand now became the bottom chords the right hand became melody and the left hand began to support whatever those chords were. I want to make sure I didn't miss any other questions. I caught you studying film scoring, basic principle for voicing in the left hand. So, Bob, for me, the basic voicings are what I call home chords, roots. You know, wherever they fall, I think they, what is it? I want to try and talk jazz, and I don't do use it usually. The one, the four, and the five, the six the two, the one diminished, right? And the seventh chord. If you master those chords in your left hand, you've got probably 80% of the gospel songs that are out there. Let me see. Uh, let's pick every praise. Minor. F the 
four. So five to G. The one. Just those chords. The six chord. The four. The five. The seventh. So once you get your hands and your left hand and your left side of your brain hearing where a chord should be, then you can mix it up. takes years I just now again with a teacher someone who's going to teach you the basics to let you know for, for who asks you can you play a chord in your left hand and you go huh did you know already do you know the name of a chord yes play me a c chord play that same c chord in your left hand if they struggle to find where c is in the left hand then they don't know the scales and that's what i try to teach i'll always ask a person play me the scale in every key two octaves because to me, that's how I trained my ear to hear where notes are. Middle, next one up, next one up, highest one up on my keyboard. And the G up there. Same thing with the left hand. Middle, down as, as low as I can go. Know where those notes are on your keyboard. So then when you want to play a chord, if you play this, you should know it. that don't sound right. Too many notes. Remove some notes. First of all, what, what are you trying to play and where are you are trying to place it? trying to play this chord but you can't play that chord with all these notes together if you begin to remove as I often would teach on my site a chord is a scale minus all the notes all these notes here if you play that like this it sounds horrible Re remove some notes now you got an F chord now you got a C chord still within this range you got a G chord you got an A minor you got a diminished chord you got a plus chord, you got a minus six, you got an A flat chord, you got an A flat six, you got a D, D flat seventh. Yeah. That's the seven, major seven. But those are all the notes found within this range. I would practice. How many chords can I find within this range? And every time I expanded out a note, it opened up more chords. When I expanded out a note, it opened up more chords. Without anyone showing me that, I had to painstakingly teach myself how to hear chords. So when I learn songs, if I heard a chord I never heard before, I go to the piano and I go, okay, what's the first one? Okay, G. Okay. Okay, that's the chord I'm hearing. Oh, that's the chord I'm hearing. As I say, I'm a, I'm a learn by ear musician. If I hear it, but I can learn it faster if I hear it than I can if I see it on paper. Let me see. I'm not sure to miss anything. You write for orchestra. You can teach me more harmony, and I can get you writing for orchestra if you want. Yeah, I would like that. I actually did. I wrote a an orchestral piece for a. I'm answering Chris. I wrote an orchestral piece for a uh, a dance group. Um, the gentleman's name is Alfred Goldman. I believe he still uses it today. He needed a orchestral piece that had the sounds of Africa in it. In fact, the name of the song is "Sounds of Africa." I believe it is on my YouTube on my YouTube site also. They won't let me get credit for it because it's, you know, it's, that's a different story. It isn't still my song. I own it. So I had to listen to The Lion King to get a feel for well, what, what would a song from Africa sound like? And I wrote the entire song in two days. And luckily, I had an, an old keyboard that had sounds of giraffe, lions, birds. Um, giraffe, lions, birds. There was another sound on it so i in two days i wrote the song in two days added the sounds to it because he needed it in a week 
and he's been using it ever since. It's called Sound of Africa. You will find it on my YouTube page. It is copyrighted. And um, that was fun doing that because I got to use the basic sounds that a keyboard has, and I put a nice string piece at the very end of it. Let me try remembering key. The E flat. Same concept. Use scale. jazz ending to it but yes um I, I love doing orchestral work again i come from a jazz band where we had strings we had flutes we had trump trombones trumpets uh, saxophones all different ranges tenor bass uh, soprano sax so it's again my sound is that of an orchestral band on a piano let me ask me if I miss any questions there uh all the musicians play today use the number system okay james yeah they that's because the musicians today use the number system. Of course, it's like a a um a cheat sheet. Where are we gonna be? We're in the one. We're gonna go to the four. Go to the four. And they're wild in the four. Go to the five. Go to the one. Go back to the one. Go on to the four. The two. The five. Go to the one. And those numbers are for the bass player, believe it or not. Or not from my understanding and seeing how it's interpreted that helps the bass player know where he's he's playing the note for where the song is going the other musicians can cheat from that don't learn the song just learn where the song is going so if someone needed to do the melody or play the melody of the song they go well, i don't know the melody i just know we're going to be in this chord and i know we're going to be in the four and we're going to hang in the four a little bit then we're going to go to the six and we're going to go to the two they're going to go to the five and i'm like okay but I'd rather learn the alphabet than learn numbers. You know, what is the chord? Alphabet chords. But that's, again, we different, um, came from different worlds back in my day. My day, we learned music. Today, we learn numbers. Nothing against it now, because there are a lot of people who are making more money than I ever will make off the number system. That's why I, I go to YouTube and I go, how did they do it? I go, oh, that's what they did. Nice. I'm too late. I'll never get there. But something I can add. Let me just see what else we have. So what would be your best advice to someone trying to learn the keyboard at home all himself or herself? If you can get any of a basic beginner book, as I say, I've got tons of them here because at one time I was going to start teaching young people music in a church and it never came to fruition, but I still have the books. Those, the better theory knowledge you have, the better you're going to find you're going to like playing music. Because the worst thing that I think a, a beginning musician can do is to watch me play and wish I could play like me. I never wanted to be able to play like anybody. I wanted to be able to play whatever I heard. So I can play like everybody. If I'm listening to um, uh, Michael, someone I, I did with this once for one of my uh, uh, Skype students, he practiced a a run from Michael Jordan, not Michael, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson music uh, from was it Beat It? Let me see. wasn't it uh, it was a run that he was practicing from a michael jackson song on his left hand that's how he that's how he practiced on his left hand i had to listen to the song and, and change it to make it make him play it correctly 
I can't remember what it was that, that, that I showed him because my ear was telling me he's fumbling through it. And if you learn it wrong, you keep playing it wrong. But if you learn it right, I guess that's what I'm trying, trying to approach. If you learn anything right, you'll always play it right. Before I could learn to do this, I didn't know that that was the correct way to play scales until a music teacher showed me three fingers, cross the thumb underneath, and then finish it out. Now, some people will play the scale like this. If you can get it done like that, fine, as long as you hit the note. But it only makes them a problem is when you want to go to the next note. That's incorrect. To use your thumb here. Now it's the second finger and the thumb and finish with the second finger. When you learn it correctly, now you can do a, 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 complete, a complete run because you know not this finger, but this finger. And each note starts with, I think it's A flat, the one I didn't to learn. A flat starts with the third finger. Didn't know that until I looked it up in a book that showed the correct fingering for scales. That's the most important part, I would say. If you're going to be a beginner learning at home, even if you don't have access to a music store, there's so much content on the internet. I wish I had the internet when I was beginning to be able to get content and instructions from people who you know, show you the ABCs of learning music. As I say, I'd love to, be gotten in, love to have gotten involved with scoring I don't want to say movie or movie screenshots, but doing Broadway because I listen to I've been to some Broadway productions and I go, wow, I I can do that, not just the gospel ones, but the one where they're just playing the basic generic chord. I said I can play that. I can write that, given an opportunity. But that's okay. We're going to see what's going to happen in in the future. Uh, I don't want to miss any of your comments so let me just go back and see number system is better okay cover that would you hear okay preach you taking the time explaining your oh well thanks bob i i i um when the internet became in the back in the aol dial-up days i put it like that those of us that remember aol back in the late 90s um i would post midi file on the internet because the AOL allowed you to create your first home page. So I would place a home page just for church musicians to download MIDI files of the, again, testimony style songs. Some of those MIDI files are still circling around the internet. And it was a joy to know that I can share music in a place, places where no one will ever meet me, but I can share them the, the, the how a song sounds, how a song could sound in the key that is either written in or in different keys. And, and the different approaches to it. So this is, again, I think from my memory, I was the first one that I can remember in the early music lesson days showing a live video or video of an actual keyboard and hands being played on it. Others have copied that and then, of course, enhanced it with their finances where mine just stayed pretty much like this. But I like knowing that I help to give people a, a point of view that they will never see. If you never see anybody show you this chord, when I was coming up, musicians would hide chords from me. I promised myself I would never hide a chord from a musician who wanted to learn because I know what it's like to ask for, what are you doing? And nobody shows you. So it's part of my own um, psyche that says, if I can help, that's what I'm here to do. Uh, my brother-in-law, you should be able to play the entire diatonic scale in one octave that helped me with my left hand. Okay, yeah. Excellent. I conduct a school in youth simply in... Can't try. Okay. Got to put on my, my better glasses so I can read. Hold on. Of course, I can't see them. Hold on. That's what this age thing does. You got to wear two set of glasses, one for driving and one for reading. Uh, let's see. Dr. Julie Clark. Hi, Sam. Thanks for teaching both the numbers and chords. Yes, I like chords as well. Yes. Good stuff, Sam. Bob, simply music refer to the seventh degree of whatever scale or the third and the fifth grade. There are a lot of you out there who are skilled at what you're saying, and that's what I did not get coming up as a youngster 
and in, as an adult and now as an old guy in music, the books helped me to understand what I was playing or what I was hearing someone else play and could not find. And again, a lot of the chords that I'm using, you won't find books that say this is a chord. But I believe Cordy would tell you what, what this chord is, but it won't tell you how to use it in the song. Where if I'm playing a song, if I'm learning a song and I hear that chord in totality, all these notes was an F, C, which is F again, F, F7, A flat, B flat, C, E flat, F, G. Sounds muddy, and it is. Let's bring it up here. There we go. It sounds pretty if you're using it in context. Um, see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Here, I, I can hear that was a wrong note. Or here. Those are the things my head hears. My head hears those chords, but I have to I have to apply it. It has to go somewhere. It has to tell a story. It can't just be a flat chord and it doesn't do anything. There's no movement. It doesn't go anywhere. But I can hear the hear, hear chords like that when I'm playing. I want to ask some more questions. Sometimes I get bogged down with talking. Uh, just stopping by Sam. Your Yamaha MX video is still the one I love to watch. Oh, that and play that. That keyboard sits in the closet now. Still got a lot of, a lot of good playing left to do with that. Thank you for playing a great presentation. Hope to learn from you when I get back to practicing. Well, Alexander, let me give you a question about you never, um, you never leave practicing. When I did not have a piano to practice on, I would find whatever I was, I'd be doing this. Like I'm playing a piano. I form a chord. I do like this on a desk or somewhere just to keep doing this because I wanted this to be constantly free enough to move. So when I got to a piano, everything you see me doing like this, when I got to a piano, it was because my hands were already Spacing out. It made me more comfortable if I wasn't practicing on a real piano or keyboard. My hands were still free enough. I was still practicing. And if I wasn't doing it on like this, in my head, I was running chords and um, scale uh, exercises through my head. When I do this... Because in my head, I practice it. Jazz chords. My head contains a lot of other people's music that I've learned that I pull from when I'm playing. Oh, let me see if I make sure I didn't leave any, anyone out. 
learned a lot from you when I was younger, used Van Basco. Oh, yes. Wow. Van Basco MIDI. That's one of the files that I was making MIDI files for. So people could look at a keyboard, a virtual keyboard back then. That's like 2000, I think. And be able to see the chords. They can slow it down. Um, again, I, I shared everything. I did not hide anything from anyone that had a question. Oh, you're welcome, Ronaldo. You, you, you were what you and other musicians last yourself was one of the reasons I was loading the internet with whatever I could, because I didn't want anyone to be in the same boat I was as a young musician, and no one would show them how that song sounds. Emmanuel, hey, can you explain how to get better with your gospel turns and licks, especially on your right hand? Um, it's it's all according to the song. And yeah, you ask yourself, well, what is a gospel song? It's a mixture of anthem and blues. Now, nobody want to tell you that because they say, well, that's sacrilege. You, you, that's the Lord's music. Well, okay, take away Tommy Dorsey chords, and what do you have? An anthem or a hymn. Put Tommy Dorsey chords in it. You have R and B and blues with an anthem and a hymn. It's a mixture, and like any good chef. You have to know how much to add and how much not to add. If you want to, and, and I'm answering um, uh, Emmanuel. If you want to play the song, um, I want to pick a hymn to give you an idea. Okay, there's not a friend like the, like like the lowly Jesus. You play like the hymn in F. Perfectly, a perfect song in its concept. But if you wanted to make it gospel, now you got to add a seventh chord. There's not a friend. There's my seventh. Like a lonely. And a diminished. Those are blues songs. Blue chords. Blues chords. Same song. But now you've added a flavoring of a, a tones of another another genre. Now, can you add a lot more? Can you add the add the add these contemporary? Well, I love I love big the um, big band sound. I'll go. There's not a friend. Look at all the big band chords. I just added it. Same song. Melody stays the same, but now I'm adding in everything that a big band writer would put in the song. Can't sing, which I could. No, not gospel is the sound of gospel is just adding the R and B chords. That's all it is. For those that want to make it something mysterical, you know, mystery, spiritual. No, it's chords. It's music. It's a just adding a, a different sound, a different approach to what you're doing. If you keep the melody the same. And you add those chords, you have a gospel sound. Sevenths, minor sixes, diminished chords, and resolve chord. We call them, and, re, and resolving chords, where the bass is placed. I hope I give you an idea. Um, you know, the, the, and this is because I was I came up as a in my home church. I was um, the musician was a skilled, learned musician. She read sheet music, so she played a lot of anthems. When it came to playing behind the preacher, she would call me to the organ because she could not play preacher chords. And I kind of questioned that. How can you read sheet music so fluently and play every note on paper, but when the preacher gets up and starts to moan, you can't play? That puzzled me as a youngster. I said, oh, okay. So it went, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I do those big band chords and jazz chords. I'm like, that's all he's doing. He's just doing a chord. Give him a diminished chord. And I'm saying, you know, who can't put three or four chords together? But she struggled and said, I can't play that. Because her teach it went against her teaching. And I, I had to accept that, that my handicap was I couldn't read what was in front of me. Her handicap was she couldn't 
adapt to playing what she what she heard someone doing or the the live you know um uh, pentecostal feel so i had the best of both worlds in a sense coming up didn't have a natural teacher but when she played a hymn uh, an anthem i got to hear her play it as it was written and then i sit down and make it my own uh the choir would always come in on god real thy great she hold g g straight she played it straight every sunday when i got a chance to play when she wasn't there she said sam you're doing the service this morning oh well we're coming in on guide me oh that great jehovah and it was so funny my first time i played as a as a as a musician by myself i forgot the intro song the preacher had to look at me and said, oh, well, maybe if you'll start singing the song, he'll be able to play it. Because I went totally blank. Yes, I had that moment. As much rehearsed and practiced as I was, I froze the very first time I played the organ by myself on that song. Still remember it to this day and never froze again after that. Because I went home and practiced and made sure I practiced whatever I had to play that next Sunday. So I was prepared. But I would, as I built the song, I looked at it. Scales. So now I can not make it gospel, but give it a nice classical feel. I'm doing all that on I'm doing it on a piano, but I, I did that mainly on an organ because I had a foot pedal to give me my my actual bottom bass. But I can now give it a different approach. Let me catch another question here. All right, I always love questions. Um, let me see. Oh, so to getting best with the gospel licks on your right hand is learning the music in its concept now. One thing I did as a young musician, I learned a song and I learned how each instrument played. If there was a piano person in the, in the, in the song, I learned what his part was. If, cause usually in the olden days, the pianos let out a song. Love Alive. So the, those were the gospel songs that I learned. No, oh, Happy Day. <laughs> Pianos let out. So I learned it exactly the way I heard it. But when they were coming out with the, the changeover, with the, where they were going the 80s, the big band songs, you know, the what, Florida Mass Choir, Mississippi Mass Choir, uh, Georgia Mass Choir, all the choirs in, Ch in Chicago, Milton, Milt Milton Brigham, when they be when they gave the big choir sound, now you had that, you had, now that, to me, that was my most fun part of learning until Richard Smallwood came on the field and changed everything. But I had now got a chance to play those real big fat chords behind a loud, you know, so that back then they had like 100 voice choirs or 50 voice choirs. But everything is like, it's a mixture. If you take it apart, you, what I call deconstruct. If you might play a chord like this, deconstruct it, whichever way you want to go. The highest note, the lowest note. Next note up, next note up, next note, next note, next note. And that's how you get that sound, by deconstructing where all the notes are. And you got to make sure you hear every note. What is it? Um, John P. Keys made it out. I made it out. Uh, I haven't played it that much. Yeah. 
has caused. Um, let me see another question here. Um, Sam, you taught me the first passing chord, for example, when you're in C and you're moving from the sixth to the fifth, sixth to the fifth. Okay. Walk down. I use it to find. I find it so hard to go back then. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you. As I say, when you start calling out those numbers, I got to get an understanding. Of, I'd rather hear the song, the song name that you used it in, because then that tells me what chording was in that place. But I say, if you're doing No Happy Day. There it is. Someone will say, well, what's that chord? C plus five. Just an inversion of it. What's that chord? A C major seventh inversion Coming to a straight D. And there's your seventh chord. And once you get the concept of how gospel uses jazz chords. It's just a mixture. Put it in there. Not so much of it to the point where you basically choke the song with these type these chords. But you find, you know, you put a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, where to sprinkle it in. You've got a gospel sounding chord. Uh, let me see the next question. Uh, you seriously sound like Barry Hat. No, please. Um, I'm getting old. I realize that. I think I've been told when I talk, I almost talk like in tones. And when I hear myself back on these videos, when I am talking, I say, oh, you know, the people are all right. I go up, I go down. I do have a, like a monotone in a sense, but it's also musical because I, I, I like the sound of where the middle part, because I'm probably, um, I'm probably down around G. Da -da 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 -da. I don't sing, but I know what a note sounds like. So my voice does. No, I don't talk up here. I used to tell the choir members when they're when they're reading back words to me, don't read them back to me. Read them back up here. I want to hear your top of your voice. So I know that you're pushing out and doing the lyrics correctly. So yes, thank you for uh, making that statement. I sound like Barry Harris. I'll need to get some more of his videos and and uh, compare it. Wow, great chip. I can do that while working. Yes, you can do that. Oh, thanks for coming in, uh, Keith. Thanks for coming in to visit. Tell my sister I says hello also. Uh, and working does a lot of two note placement, Emmanuel. Okay, you're answering. Can you explain the chromatic walk up, like in the song, The Battle is Yours? Uh, the battle is yours taught me the key of D, taught me to appreciate the key of, of D. When I learned that song, it taught me to appreciate the key of D. Of course, usually I played hymns in the key of D, but when I had to learn the battle is yours, I'm like, wait a minute, D major? Who writes in D major? And I had to go and listen to the song and listen to it and hear the changes that you say, the walk up. And of course, the intro, you had to get right. I probably still didn't play it right. It's the walk up, the seventh, minor, six, into a major. So there's your minor six. There's your seven. There's your minor six. And into a major chord. So many ways to go with it.
And the walk-up is just playing chords followed by a bass. Again, movement. The, when you see a lot of my videos, you will see constant movement when I'm playing because these type of songs encourages me to have, don't let your chords be stagnant. No, it's got to be have the movement. And that also helps teach the, right, the left hand to work with it. When it knows that you're going to do this, getting ready to move, everybody play, everybody play, and end. Keep moving. Drop. Because in the song, you hear that scale. Drop the chords. It's a exercise of discipline to know when you're going to drop the chord, is it the chord that you want in that place? Because I'm in a different spot, the left hand knows the chords. Uh, Don't forget that seventh chord. Minor, major, end of the majors with a nine if you want. It's a, it's a pretty sounding chord. So I use it 100% of the time now. So, Bob, that, 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 that classic walk-up is in every gospel song. Uh, I'm trying to think. Encourage yourself. E flat. So you can find walk-ups in a lot of the traditional gospel songs. Some of the contemporary ones have lost that flavoring. Everybody is using a minor, a major, a major, a major, to your minor. Major numbers one, four, six. This is today's chord. Five, one, four, five, one, six, four, one, five. No complaints because they're getting more hits than I am with my music. But I'm just saying, from where I came from musically, um, those songs would not have been on the top charts back in the 80s and the 70s. No one was doing that back then. But I hope I gave you a bill, um, a Bob rather, excuse me. Um, the walk up concept you want a constant movement depending upon what chords you're using for that particular song. And it all boils down to what song are you using it for? Does the walk up fit for every gospel song? Depends on how you're going to do it. If you were doing a hymn, um, there's plenty of walk-ups for a hymn. If I were doing, um, let me see if I can get a real, one real quick. That's that's known. Uh, there's so many hymns. I am thine, O Lord, F, G. Here's a walk-up. depend upon, again, how you want to apply it. Um, let me see if I can, I don't want to miss all the questions that are coming up. What is the brand and model keyboard you're using right now? Oh, I have my, I just made an anniversary too, 
my uh, the Yamaha S seventy XS. I think I put this one in service in two thousand nine. I just saw a video that when I did the first unveiling of it, I believe it was two thousand nine. I unveiled it, so it's. Got some time on it, but of course I take care of instruments. I've been trained. My father was a Hammond organ repairman, and I was his his high and his his sidekick going around with him repairing Hammond organs. So I learned to appreciate instruments. So I don't never beat this one up. If anything, it'll wear out from the time or from parts wearing out than it will for me actually beating it up. And because I learned on a Steinway piano play, a Steinway piano, I understand. I like I love this the size of these keys. I feel more comfortable with with this size of keys than I would on some of the other keyboards that I have. Oh, uh, let's see. I have some kids teaching at church now. If you by chance have keyboards sitting around and want to clear out, oh, <laughs> I have keyboards, and because they played a part in my entire life, um, I'm hanging on to them. I even have a Casio that people. Hated the Casio boards. I bought the first PX300, believe it is. And it's still my, my actual road keyboard. If I'm going outside someplace, that's what I'm taking with me. It's durable. It has built-in speakers. You can you can attach, um, of course, an amplifier to it. And if you want to be teach a lesson, it has two headphone outs in it. So if I wanted to teach a lesson, that would be, if I were to go live lesson, that's the keyboard I would take because it has two, two headphone outs for teaching, which is, which is tremendous. You can teach in quiet, in a sense, and hear firsthand any miscues uh, that a, a player might have. So, yeah, I got some boards here, but uh, they're all dear to me. They're like family. I bought them at certain times in my career. You know, I still have my M1. I'd have to take it out. I broke a key on it once, which is why I had to upgrade to the Ensonic, which broke finally after 14 years. But I still keep the M1 because... $2,500 and two years of paying for it. Uh, it's kind of hard to just say here, watch it go someplace. So, uh, sorry. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, you may not know how he'll do it again, but a nice walk up to is from DG in the key of C. DG. 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 For me, it's how are you going to apply it to 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 the song? How does it, you know, where in the song does it does it fit? Not generally. I mean, some people are, are tremendous. Uh, I'll use Corey Henry as as my example because I saw Corey Hen Henry as a five year old playing an organ, both hands. He couldn't reach the foot pedals, but he was playing the organ with both hands, playing chords and bass in his left hand, and chords and melody in his right hand. I saw that with my eyes, and I looked at it, and I said, this is not normal, because he's playing some of the chords I play, as far as his fingers could reach. He is, you think he's, um, he just, um, um, he just happened. No, he was happening back then, and he kept with it. As I say, he did not go to Berkeley. He went to the, the School of Life, and life and the life of music that is in him birthed from his family members and the and the ability that was I'll call his ability God given. I did not sit to a piano and all of a sudden started playing. I struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled even more until an understanding of music began to be uh, taught to me as an instrumentalist, what a chord sounded like in the context of a song. Wow, hour and 14 minutes. I only expected to be here at the most a half an hour, but I'm hoping that, I'll, of course, this will stay up on my site. Um, I'm hoping to do a lot of these in, in my future where I may have something more structured. So if the, let's say everybody wants to learn how to play in the key of G flat, which I struggled with because I could not get my hands comfortable playing on black keys where they would fall on the notes. And remember that there's a B major in the scale and an F. So I'd be, you know, be looking forward to teaching, doing something like this again. Say we're going to cover, we're going to talk about G flat today. And we're going to cover how to get fluent in the key of G flat to be able to play any song you want. 
how to court around it. And how to get comfortable and, 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 and prepare your hands, both the left and the right hand, to be able to play in G flat. It is not an easy key to adapt to. You'll find yourself playing a lot better in A flat then you will put, then you will find playing in G flat. Some call it F sharp. The correct term is G flat. It's only a sharp if you're in the key of C. That's F sharp in or in D. F sharp. But it's G flat is the correct name. Again, I do look in the books and get to get an understanding. So if I'm imparting like I am now, I can talk to what a book says. They call it G flat. But playing in it is a whole different animal. Classical music, G flat is the key you want to play in. That's what I wanted. As I tell you, if I hear a note and I play it wrong, I'll know at the very time. As soon as I play it, I'll know it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go ahead and Again, the ninth chords. Well, let me see how many other. Always curious about contemporary music that music history, old gospel music gives rise to other styles of music like the R&B. No, jazz was there before gospel. That's my point. My point. A lot of people think that the little bit okay, here's how in my day that the world came into the church and took the church music and turned it worldly. That is a miss. What it was. Well, I'll say that that's fake news. The world did not come into the church and steal the music of the church and take it to the world. There was jazz before there was gospel. I'm sorry for those who want to grasp on to their, their emotional um, feeling about church music. Jazz was out there a long time before gospel. Where do you think gospel got its gospel feel from? Jazz. I'm a musician. I was trained by a musician, not a teacher, a musician. Gave us music history. Where these things come from. What happened was, and again, I'll put it like this. Churches didn't have a lot of, or couldn't, have, couldn't afford the, the, the trained musician coming in there. So the, whoever could sit down to a panel at piano. You're hired. He brought in and she preaches and music evolved around what the music, what that musician could play. Because you have so many churches that were forming again, the church, the churches, the uh, beginnings is another part of a different kind of structure of life. You know, a lot of churches came from churches because people didn't like what the ministers were preaching and started their own. They couldn't afford again, the learned musicians. So whoever could, tinkle the keys that's who got the job and if they played for the juke club as they say on saturday night sunday morning after they sobered up they were playing in the church and they brought those same chords to the music that's why a lot of your testimony songs can't nobody can't nobody do like jesus jazz Familiar. So I understand people grasp to uh, an emotional feeling. Oh, this is church music. No, this is music. And just like you have different spices in the world, you have cumin, you have uh, oregano, you have salt, you have black pepper, um, like you have different spices. All this music is just another spice. And if you add it to something that you, if it makes it sound good, 
you all of a sudden say it's always sounded like that. That's our music. No, I learned my best music in high school, learning about the 1812 Overture and um, the Chicago group came out back during my time. Saturday in the Park. Saturday in the Park. Learning uh, um, Caribbean style music. Um, you see. So I learned my, I cut my teeth on music, learning everything that wasn't gospel, but it taught me the theory of how chords can sound. And then I relayed that when I was playing in the church to what the hymns, I didn't put that stuff with anthems, but I did put it with hymns. And when the early gospels started coming out, they were, you know, the Clara Ward singers and Roberta Martin, they had their R&B musicians playing for them. Yeah, Caravan, they had, they weren't, you know, don't think that the, what was in their glass was water or orange juice. It was one of the, it was one of the spirits, but it helped them to play and to accomplish what they were doing. Uh, Yvonne, I still have the workbook, but it's not for sale because it was free when I was doing it on the internet. And if you're interested in getting the one of the older copies of it from 2009, just email me at soundofjoy123 at gmail.com. I'd be happy to send you one. As I say, when I put those workbooks together, I was borrowing from some of the books I bought, and I'll use that term, borrowing, pictures from some of the books, and in there, I you learn to do this. Ah. Remember, the thing to do a complete two, two octave scale, though, that book has that in every key, and the harmonic minor scale. You'll find that scale also in every key, and you'll get the chords you see me playing, you will see that in that um, in that workbook that I put together. My attempt, in, attempt back in the 2000s when I was teaching my course was to give out as much information to everyone or to anyone that I was able to glean from to help me understand why a chord is used in a song, what it looks like, not just here, but here and here. And then my further courses, as you see on the internet, is how they're used in particular songs. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody's questions. So forgive me, I'm, I'm scrolling back. Okay. Just scrolling back over to some of the questions. I don't want to think I, I think I wasn't paying attention to you. Sometimes my glasses that I'm wearing are for looking at my iPhone, so it's a lot more clearer. When I'm looking at the computer monitor, it's it's a little bit fuzzy. Oh, was your student playing Michael Jackson's Billie Jean? Because that sounded like the bass line. Yeah, I think that's what he was playing. And I wanted to show him correctly. What was that? I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, uh. I don't think that was the one. I'd have to go back. It's it's on if you look at my Last Skype summary, I actually covered it there for him, to, and I slowed it down so that I can have him do the correct fingering of the bass in the song so he can get more. So when he's practicing it as part of his warm-up, he'll use the correct fingering for it. He'll find it a lot easier to play. I'd have to look at it again. One thing I, when I teach, uh, when I do an actual Skype Skype lesson with someone, 
I give them all that we covered in the Skype lesson. I put it in a summary. And once I get past that summary, I never go back to it because I want to keep my mind fresh for the next lesson or for the next uh, Skype lesson I'm going to do so I don't wind up giving somebody the same lesson I just gave someone. That's the one thing that I learned in, in learning music. Don't, don't stagnate yourself to one song. Once you've got it learned, move to the next one. You can always go back, but you never want to stop yourself. That's why for those, when I see musicians say, I don't know what to practice, I'm saying, well, there's millions of songs out there. Pick one. <laughs> there's millions of tunes. Pick one that you've never heard before. I don't care where it, where it is. If it's the Oscar Mayer commercial. play that a lot a lot because I wanted to learn how to play that. Then when I would hear um uh the opening theme to cheers that in a while that's those were my teachers learning something that i from a television commercial from a, a jingle to a what was that? i used to do the flintstones f mm. jazz that up but yes those are the things that help me to get an understanding of the music i hear that i would gravitate to can i play that without no one showing me and yes that you saw me struggle with it there i haven't played that in years but i would learn it like i heard it and then move on to something else make sure i didn't miss anybody oh repost oh post email let me post i'll post it I believe I got it right this time. So you just send me a request, and I already I've sent it to other people, so it's already you might say it's already on my um, in my sent list. All I gotta do is just drag it out and send it to you. And again, I have no problem sharing what um basically what i've paid for put it like that over the years uh so i don't think i would offend anybody if i'm giving something that i'm not even charging for it just sharing just like we're sharing right now if i show you a chord if somebody wants to claim a copyright on this chord well we got a problem there because i've been playing this chord and every song i play you know don't don't get too too caught up in the fact i think some songs that i've played here on youtube and on facebook um they would not allow me to air the video because a copyright claim went out against it. And I'm like, but it's a song that's been sung for 40 or 50 years. Who's trying to claim a copyright on it? But I accept that because I'm not out here to steal someone else's work. Definitely don't want to do that. I wouldn't buy to steal my work. But if I can help someone learn a song by showing them the chords to it, they, you ought to be glad because I'm going to show them the chords you played in the song. Well, I'm going to go. It's, it's We're coming up on one hour and 30 minutes. Thanks for coming in, uh, for giving me um, conversation, because it gives me an idea of the content that I should put into these, um, these videos. I may just do a quick video showing, saying that on this particular evening or moment in time, 
future time. I'm going to be covering XYZ. If you're interested, come in at this particular time. I'm not sure how many will be viewing this video, but it'll be left up. I know I have people around the world that do view my page, and I do appreciate those. Each time you view my page and view any of my videos, um, you are helping to support me in my music journey at this stage. Again, this is Sam Tobert from Sound of Joy Music Services, stmusician.com. You go check out my site, see what I offer to the songwriter and the singer. If you are a songwriter or singer and you need lead sheet music created, I do that too. I've done that for myself. Songs I've written, I can actually create a track and email that to you. You can sing to it, send me back your vocals, and I'll marry the track and your vocals together. Again, I'm all about music, and now that I'm at that stage where I'm going to retire from the the full daytime job, this will be become this will become my first love uh, until, as they say, the Lord says, uh, bring your notes and your chords back home. So, thank you again. I love all of you. Please stay safe. There, it's not a, it's not safe everywhere you go. I realize we can't physically touch anymore and physically see each other, but this virtual stuff is the best thing next to having nothing. Be blessed, everyone. Be safe. See you next time. Take care. Bye.